Welcome back, everybody. Continuing the theme of the classic shooter, Hiroshi would like to know how to crouch shoot. Thanks, Hiroshi. It's always good to have the ability to hit the deck and dodge enemy fire when the going gets tough. So this tutorial will be a two-parter. First, we will look at creating a cool crouch and prone function. Then we will look at how to link that to shooting. Are you ready? Let's crack on. Let's create a really cool input system where if we press and hold down, we crouch. If we double tap and hold down, we go prone. And of course, when we release, we return back to standing. So for this, create or open up your player controller script. To begin with, let's focus on one variable for now. That will be a public bool and we want to create two, is crouched, and is prone. Then we shall create a new method, public void crouch underscore prone. And inside, as explained in the diagram before, when we press and hold down, we want to crouch. When we release, return to standing. For that, we will create two if statements for two inputs. The first being if, Input dot get key down. So the frame, the key is input. I've gone with key code S. You can go with whichever you like. And likewise, if input dot get key up, the frame, the button is released, key code dot S. With our two inputs set up, let's return to our get key down. When we press our down input, we of course want is crouched to be true and a visual representation of the action. I'm using an animation, so I'm going to set a bool as a parameter. So anim, my animator, dot set bool. The parameter will be called crouched, and that will equal the current state of the is crouched bool. Upon releasing the input, we want the opposite to happen. So underneath, we will change is crouched is false. We no longer want to be crouching. And of course the animator to reflect that. This is all we need for crouching. However, we did say that when we double tap down and hold, we're going to go into a prone state. For that, let's return back to our variables at the top. And we're going to need to input a few more. The first, we want to create two private floats. The first being first tap time. So the time, the first input was recorded and time between taps, how long between the first and that second quick tap. We're going to use a coroutine to detect that second tap. We'll need a private bool, coroutine allowed and a private integer tap count to record the number of inputs. So let's set these variables up in our start method here. And we'll say that our first tap time is equal to zero F. Time between taps, I think a quarter of a second is the right amount of time. So 0 0.25 F. Tap count, we want to be zero. And we also want to have the ability to detect for that second input for the double tap from the moment we start the game. Therefore, coroutine allowed will equal true. With those set up and in place, let's return to our crouch prone function. First, let's do the easy bit. When we release the input, we of course want to return to standing from prone, just like we do when we're crouched. So here, where we have get key up, we will do the same but for is prone. So is prone will equal false. We will set a parameter for our animator, set bool parameter prone is equal to the is prone bool. Therefore, so long as we are not pressing down, we're always going to be in a standing position. Now let's look at putting those variables in place to get our double tap system working. When we first input down, we want our tap count to go up by one. So tap count plus equals one, just like so. Then 
underneath, we want to create an if statement that says if tap count is equal to one and coroutine allowed is true, and this coroutine we will create in a moment is going to detect for the second input. What do we want to happen? We want to record the time of that first tap. So first tap time is equal to time.time .time of the frame the input was pressed. Then we want to start that coroutine, which we will call double tap detect. So let's go ahead and set up that coroutine. And we shall write that underneath our crouch prone method. So we will write private I enumerator, double tap detect. The spelling does have to match what we've put here. Then inside our enumerator, so long as this condition has been met, we don't want the coroutine to start again and overlap and override this one. So we will say, that the coroutine allowed is now false. Then we want to detect that second input. For this, we will create a while loop that says while time dot time is less than the first tap time plus that time between taps. So from the moment we press for the first time, that's our first tap time. So long as we press a second time within that time between taps, then we want to register the second input and go prone. This second input, of course, will also increase the tap count by one again. So we want the tap count to be recognized as two. For that, we will create an if statement. So if tap count is equal to two, then is prone is true. And we also want to say is crouched is false because we want to avoid going prone and crouching, conflicting with each other. We also want to break this loop. So at the end, we'll type in break. Then beneath our if statement, we also want to add yield return new. And here we're gonna put wait for end of frame for some accuracy. To wrap up this coroutine, at the end, we shall just reset some variables, so our tap count returns to zero, our first tap time returns to zero, and we also want to re-enable coroutine allowed, coroutine allowed equals true. Before we hit save and return to Unity, go back to our update function and make sure to add our crouch underscore prone function in there like so. Then, crack a save, let's head back into Unity. Now, let's piece this together in the animator. I have my crouch and prone animation set up. I've also created my two parameters, crouched and prone. To create your parameters, simply click the cross and you can choose to create a float, an int, a ball or a trigger. So go ahead, create your two ball parameters, crouched and prone. The spelling and capitalization does have to match that which we set up in the script. Then let's put these into action in the animator. So from my default idle state, I'll right click, make a transition to crouch. On this transition, you want to make sure we have no exit time and no fixed duration. So do apply that to every transition we make. We of course want the condition to be crouched equals true. And likewise, from crouch to return back to idle, we'll do the same again, making sure no exit time, no fixed duration, and this time the parameter is crouched will be false to return back to standing. Repeat this process for prone. I've gone ahead and done it already. And before I hit play and test, I'm gonna highlight my player, hit play. You should now Press and hold to crouch and double tap and hold to go prone. However, you will notice the collider does not resize to suit our character, meaning we can still get hit and take damage when we're trying to avoid it. So let's resize our collider by adjusting the size and the offset. 
We're going to do this through a new C Sharp script called Player Collider Con. Add that to the player and open it up. For this, we will need two public variables. The first being the public player controller, the player. We need to know when the player is crouched or is prone. And the public box collider 2D for the player collider we want to resize and alter the offset of. Speaking of which, underneath, let's create three private vector twos for the offset and the size. The first being stand offset, stand size, crouch offset, crouch size, then prone offset and prone size. Even though these are private, we we'll want to assign the sizes we want in the inspector. That's why we've serialized them. After that, let's assign a few things in start, such as the player equals get component, the player controller script, and we can automatically get our default standing size and offset. So we'll say that the stand size is equal to the player collider dot size and the stand offset is equal to the player collider dot offset. So we can get that information from the very start. Afterwards, in the update, go ahead and create three individual if statements. The first being if the player is crouched. Second, if the player is prone and the third if the player is not crouched and is not prone we're idle we're standing then we want to set the size and offset we desire so when we're crouched the player color size and offset will be that of crouch size and offset prone prone size prone offset and we want to return to standing so we can go back to the stand size and stand offset we got from the start Excellent. Hit save, head back into Unity. Once everything is ready, you should have something that looks like this. Go ahead and fill out the player with the player controller script and the player collider with our collider component. For the stand offset and size, we don't need to make any changes here. We're gonna get that information the moment the game starts because standing is our default position. However, how do we get the size for crouching and prone? For this, I'd like you to copy your Collider component, paste it as new. It should appear at the bottom. Then go to your animation tab, select your crouch animation and a frame so we can see the player crouched. All we're going to do is hit edit on this copied Collider and adjust the size to fit the player. Now, whatever values you see in the X and Y offset and size, we're going to copy that information to be our crouch offset and size. So go ahead, copy that information just like so. And once you're done, repeat this for prone. So for our prone, I'll select the prone animation, a frame so I can see it, and I'll lower this even more. I may even widen it as well, just to demonstrate. There we are. And I'll go ahead and repeat and copy that information as my prone. Yours may be different, so go ahead and make sure all that information is complete, just like so. Then we can remove this component. We don't need two colliders, and we'll be left with that original collider for standing. Now. When we hit play, we immediately have our standing size and offset. And when we crouch or go prone, the collider changes size to suit. This is one way of crouching or going prone for your projects. However, if you're making a shooter like mine and you shoot standing, shoot crouching or shoot prone, the bullets are coming from a position as though we're standing. Do not worry. We're going to specifically address this in the next video and see how we can apply this mechanic to shooting while crouching and prone. Thank you all very much for watching, guys. I really do appreciate you taking the time to come check us out and learn game dev with us. If you have any questions at all, please do let us know here or in any of our other socials, such as Twitter or Instagram. I'd be more than happy to answer your questions and listen to your suggestions 
for any future videos. Until then, I will see you soon. Take care.